Hi, I'm Imtishar from Motoring Middle East and we're taking a look today at the brand new 2016 Ford F-150 here in full fat platinum trim, which means it's got all the options. First, let's take a look at the exterior of the car. As you can see, this is the all new F-150 and the F-150 was getting a bit long in the tooth, but they've updated it with all the styling from the Atlas concept that was first shown in Detroit. It's got these very muscular flanks, it's very blocky, it's very sci-fi in 80s. And of course, it has these cool reverse rake headlights which come with this inverted C-shape which actually light up quite nicely even in the daytime. It's a very strong, very aggressive, very masculine truck. So there's no question who Ford is aiming this at but they are the best selling truck in America and potentially the world so you can't really argue with them. So on the exterior, which obviously the front is the most important bit because that's the bit that changes in these trucks. It's really good. I think most people are going to be pretty happy with it. It's obviously better when the Raptor comes out. Let's do the rest of the truck. If you can see, They've got these huge extra mirrors here, which are for allowing you to see around corners. They're actually double mirrors. So the top mirror is the normal one. There's a slightly more concave version at the bottom, which allows you to see. But otherwise, there is a gigantic blind spot. You could hide a Miata about here, or you could probably hide a Corolla up about here. You won't see a single vehicle. So these things are almost mandatory, although I think the lower trims don't get them. They also fold, but they don't power fold, as you can tell. Of course, but all the mod cons, so you've got uh, keyless entry in this full fat trim and of course folding side steps which are quite cool and uh, not exclusive to fold everybody has them now but they are quite nice to have this has the full suite of sensors as well so you can do a round view camera like you've seen them in nissans you get them in this as well so basically it gives you a nice top down view and you will need it because this is an extremely long truck this is double cab plus believe it or not this is the short bit there's actually two longer bits Stuff that you may not have seen before, but you will see first time on this F-150. This rather cute hide a step, so let's see if I can do this. It's actually quite handy because it allows you to get into the bed. Closing it, not so straightforward. You've got to, yeah, do that. And let's try it again. Yeah, that happens every single time. So yes. Um, still leaf springs at the back. Believe it or not, still leaf springs like the 1800s. So the ride is a little bit firm. It's not quite the kind of pillowy push thing that you're hoping for. It's kind of gas shocks, none of that fancy Raptor style reservoir, extended length, none of that. It's just normal shocks, but Raptor exists for that reason. These are 20s and it's quite off-roady tires. This is the FX off-road edition, which is now a trim available on everything. You can get that on the basic car. You can get it on this top of the line one. Other cool things, oh by the way, I want to point out, the tail lights actually have blind spots in them. So if you smash these tail lights in an accident, they're going to cost you a fortune to replace. So they have a lot of technology going on, including blind spot, and they actually also detect incoming traffic. So if traffic's incoming, they'll beep and warn you. It's a very high tech vehicle. Let's see if I can get this right. This is actually the world's first power opening tailgate. And if you notice, it's damped. So it's hydraulic now, which is quite cool. Um, this is also the first time Ford's updated the man step, which is a phrase they didn't like, but basically the step that helps you get into the truck. As you can see, it's got bed extenders and tie downs and all that fun stuff. So it's... And you're thinking, okay, how do I climb in? Pull this yellow thing out, flip it up, and that's it. That's how you get into the truck. So, king of the world, I think. It is really well thought of. The kind of people who are using these trucks for day-to-day -day basis, you'll find it's very, very handy and very, very well thought out. It has to be. It's the best thing truck in America. It's always a little indents here for keeping your, um, let's just say Cokes. Cokes go in there. It's a very, very cool truck. I think it's time we looked at the interior and checked out all that space. Welcome to the rear seat of the F-150. In the old days, that used to be quite a penance, but now look at it, it's a much bigger space. There's plenty of leg room for me to stretch out. There's actually headroom as well, so even Shazad could fit here. The seats are quite comfortable and they've got a nice angle, so you can probably do very long journeys without any issue. The leather is quite soft, of course, full seat belts across and it's a nice armrest. Rear seat passengers get a quite handy electric socket outlet and a laptop charger point and heated seats which is not going to be used a lot in the Middle East but of course they have because this is the full fat platinum trim. Um, it's a big step up 
for rear seats in one of these trucks because normally it's quite a penalty box but I think here they made a big improvement. Let's look at the front and see what the actual drivers feels like. And now we're checking out the interior of the Ford F-150 and as you can see it's definitely one of the best looking cars in its class. These very strong geometric shapes are no accident. Ford wants you to think conservative, obvious truck driver and it is what it is. Having said that, everything is laid out very nicely, everything is where you expect it, so there's a gear knob, not, gear stick, not one of those fancy knobs like Mopar or big pull him down gear stick. It's all very safe and obvious and of course it's like mimicking most of other Fords so you have a nice sync system here and redundant buttons which can all be operated when you've got gloves on because you're a working truck driver. Seating position is very nice, very comfortable for long trips. Um, again, like the switch gear, simple analog gauges with this big digital screen which has potentially too much information happening here. There are trip computers, there's fuel economy, there's towing angles, it's all a bit much and every once in a while the car likes to flash a warning at you like engine on for some reason. So it is a bit much and there's a lot of information overload here but it is a well thought out cabin and the only quibble I really have is that the quality is and still isn't very premium despite this being a 270,000 m truck so this is hard plastic this is soft plastic you know I would kind of like to see more soft and even this gear gear steering wheel sorry is could be a little softer but of course it'll last forever that's the point Again, it's a very command seating position. Most people are going to be quite happy with the way things are laid out. Um, Technology-wise, there is a scrap load of stuff in here. You're talking about heated steering wheel, automatic parking, um, blind spot assist, uh, uh, radar cruise control in a Ford F-150, radar cruise control. Um, strangely, it only has two USB ports, uh, which are yeah in there, way down there in the dungeon, and there's an SD card slot. So power jack points but I would trade two of them for USBs to be honest. Um, of course switchable four-wheel drive with a locking rear diff. Uh, most of the time two-wheel drive is fine, most people are quite happy with it. Other demerits, um, steering wheel nicely shaped however it's a bit of a button explosion and I don't really know what I'm touching sometimes like is this the volume one or is this this is this cruise control? No way to tell. It's too many buttons on you, it's too busy. I think Ford could do with simplifying this and taking a note out of some of the luxury brands because this is becoming a very obviously a luxury truck. Okay, let's go for a drive of the F-150 in the platinum trim with 4x4 FX4 off-road. It's a lot of acronyms, don't worry about it. Um, so what have we got here? Uh, all new F-150, aluminum, so it's almost 300 kilos lighter depending on the trim you're getting. It's a lot of technology. It's the first time an aluminium truck has ever been applied on this scale. A full aluminium body. The, the frame is still steel, good old traditional steel, so you know, don't worry. Of course, it's much stronger. The aluminium is affixed to the body via lots of bonded adhesives and clever things. Don't worry, it won't fall apart. Is it the same material as your Coke can? No, it's actually much stronger. I mean, this is some space age stuff, so I wouldn't worry about it. Will it be more expensive to repair? Good question. I'm not going to bash this one to find out, but I imagine it's going to be slightly more expensive. But does it feel any different to drive? Does it feel light like a Lotus? Actually, no. It just feels like an F-150. I think one of the big disappointments for me with this truck, when you just talked about how amazing and space age it is and how much they've improved it, is how much they've retained the character in F-150, which isn't a very exciting character. I mean, this is a commercial vehicle at heart. This is this is a formal edition, don't get me wrong, but it's still a commercial vehicle. And it kind of drives like one sometimes. The steering is very direct, but there isn't anything happening feeling-wise. The gearbox is very stodgy. I mean, it can occasionally slip and thunk through the gears. It really isn't the best transmission money you can buy. And in off-road like this, I mean, it's capable, it can do everything, but it definitely never fails to remind you that this is a big, heavy truck. That's not even an SUV. This is a truck, proper truck. So, what's the engine? You think it's the EcoBoost, aren't you? No, it's not. This is the 5-litre V8, the uh, Scorpion V8, I think. I'm not sure which funny name Ford has for it. It's basically a variant of what they have in the Mustang. And um, it's all right. You're looking about 385 horsepower, 387 horsepower, depending on PS, BHP. Uh, about 380-something foot-pounds of torque. So it's quite a powerful engine on paper. Obviously, the one to get right. Well, it's fine. It does the job. I mean, the truck certainly moves off okay but the trouble with this f-150 is it doesn't feel very light and sometimes it feels the engine is struggling a bit I mean it has to rev a whole lot more than you think a big 
nearly 400 horsepower V8 should rev. It's, it's going in two, it's mid range, two and three thousand RPM. That's where you get the torque. I don't know if it's a failing of the gearbox. I suspect it is, or the way the engine is set up. But either way, it's not effortless in the way that a big V8 truck should be. It makes me think that the truck will really be best sampled with that twin turbo EcoBoost. You know the one. That's the 3.5 litre engine with, well, it's got less horsepower than the V8 for 375, but it's got a ton more torque, a word that I shouldn't say. Um, 420 foot pounds of torque. I mean, that is diesel like. And I've driven it in other cars, in other applications, and you know what? It shifts. I mean, it makes this whole truck just lift up and be weightless. Even with this kind of slow gearbox, it's good. So should you buy an F-150 Platinum or any edition for that matter, I mean, it's a great truck in terms of making you feel good. I mean, sitting up here, it has just a lovely cowboy feel. I love this cutout here that really makes it easy for me to see out, see the road. Um, but if expecting a transcendent, transcendent driving experience, you're not going to be amazed. For that, you need to look to the Ram. The Ram is the car that the truck that feels like a car. I mean, it's got plenty of power, we're drifting slightly gently sideways. It's got plenty of power, don't get me wrong. But it's a truck. And if you don't like trucks, this is not gonna convince you. If you like trucks, this is the best F-150 ever made. But it's not gonna pull people who aren't into trucks. And for that, they need to look to the Ram. Or something in the middle, like a Chevy. However, if you've got 27,000 jumps to spare, you're a big Ford fan, and you want the world's best-selling truck, well, you can be rest assured, Ford have done a good job. And I say this because I'm kind of fishtailing ever so slightly and don't want to slide off this hill. <laughs> Let's see if I can go this way. Yeah, she does it. Still a Ford. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, of course. Thanks for watching. See you next time.